It's always so easy to blame things on getting older. Forget where your car keys are? You must be getting old. This applies to the question, how much protein do we need over 50? There's a thing called anabolic resistance. When our bodies no longer respond to ingesting protein, like when we were younger, specifically regarding its reduced effectiveness at stimulating muscle protein synthesis, a system that helps prevent muscle breakdown. The worse the system works, the more muscle we lose. Muscle loss can ultimately lead to our losing our independence and becoming weak and frail. The goal of optimizing our protein intake is to protect our muscle mass. The simple solution to anabolic resistance is to increase protein intake. This brings up two questions. When does anabolic resistance start? And by how much do we need to increase our daily protein intake? As of yet, it's unclear if anabolic resistance is directly caused by aging, or as a review I recently read stated, it may be because of other factors associated with aging. For example, increasing inactivity, low-grade inflammation, and or increased obesity likely contribute to anabolic resistance. Another systematic review found that out of 48 study arms, 30 didn't find any evidence of age-related anabolic resistance. So it's important to examine different factors that influence anabolic resistance and protein requirements other than age to see if they apply to us. The one that has the biggest impact is our activity level. To illustrate, they did a study with the clickbaity title, Two Weeks of Reduced Activity Decreases Lean Leg Mass and Induces Anabolic Resistance of Myofibular Protein Synthesis in Healthy Elderly. Okay, that might have been a bit of a long title to be clickbait, but it got my attention. And what they found was that in as little as two weeks, by reducing these healthy older adult step count by 76%, they saw a 26% reduction in the rate of muscle protein synthesis after a meal. So we're not even talking about resistance training. Just having a lower activity level by walking less will trigger anabolic resistance, underpinning the importance of staying active as we age. Obesity has been associated with anabolic resistance independent of age, so much so that they've coined the term sarcopenic obesity, a condition where a person has a very high body fat percentage with low muscle mass. But once again, not everyone who's obese has anabolic resistance. Three things that seem to factor into this are insulin resistance and low-grade chronic inflammation, both side effects of obesity, and overweight people tend to be less active. For obese people, adding in more high-quality lean protein while reducing overall food consumption could have a double whammy positive effect, as protein is more satiating and will help them feel satisfied with less overall food. When it comes to how much protein we should consume daily, I looked at studies involving resistance training because if we're serious about protecting our muscle mass and strength as we age, we'll be weight training. There are two large meta-analyses that look at protein intake and resistance training to maximize muscle growth. One split the studies into two groups, one over 45 and another under 45. It found no additional benefits to protein intake of 1.6 grams per kilogram a day or 0.73 grams per pound a day on resistance training induced gains in fat-free mass. This study found that increases in fat-free mass are reduced with age, bringing us to the question, should 1.6 grams per kilogram a day be a minimum for older guys? The second meta-analysis, which included 74 randomized controlled trials involving 2,665 participants, split the groups into those over and under 65 and highlighted the lack of research on protein in older ones, finding that protein amounts equal to or greater than 1.6 grams per kilogram a day showed muscle size and strength gains in the under 65 group, but there's a lack of research on those over 65 to draw a conclusion. Another thing we need to look at is protein quality. Animal proteins have a better amino acid profile for building muscle and are generally easier to digest than plant protein. If you get your protein mainly from plants, then you'll need to eat more to offset this imbalance. For hard training older men who want to protect their muscle and strive to build even more, I feel it's safe to recommend 1.6 grams per kilogram a day or 0.73 grams per pound a day of lean body weight as a minimum. Now for a maximum, it's harder to say as the research just isn't there. So I'll put a table on the screen from a narrative review written by Brad Schoenfeld 
and two other researchers showing recommended protein intakes for older men in various conditions, and right there in the center, they have one for physically active or athletic individuals seeking to maximize muscle growth, with the maximum being 2.2 grams per kilogram a day, or one gram per pound a day. Protein intake is an important piece of the puzzle when it comes to maintaining and building new muscle. To learn how much food you need, including all the macronutrients, watch this video next and keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.